Hey guys, welcome to the very first book club Wednesday. So this was a little bit harder than I was expecting. Reading the book was easy, but I've been in front of the camera for a little bit now trying to come up with something to talk about that's not just a review of the book. So guys, I'm going to be super honest. I'm not sponsored by anybody or anything like that, so I'm free to say what I actually think about it. And to be honest, I'm not super into the book so far. I feel like the book has some really great concepts and the actual basis for it is pretty good. But it's not one of those books where like every other sentence is just mind blowing and you're just having this new revelation of how to live your life. And that's a lot of pressure to put on a book, but I'm not a big reader. So for a book to actually get my attention and make me sit down and finish a book, it kind of has to be mind blowing. So this is a bit of a different read for me, which makes it difficult for me to talk about. So chapter one is called Keep Your Vision in Front of You. And I actually highlighted a quote that pretty much sums up chapter one. It says, if you keep the vision in front of you and don't get talked out of it, but just keep honoring God, being your best, thanking him that it's on the way, God will supersize whatever you're believing for. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond which I think the whole concept is really great about having something to keep in front of you to remind you of what you're working towards. And I've even heard authors like Rachel Hollis talk about the same thing where she encourages people to actually write a goal list and write that same goal list every single day until you achieve that. And she also says that when you constantly see something that your brain will naturally just work towards it. So I think that there is some merit behind that and I know I personally have done things like that without realizing it. In chapter two is called Run Your Race and it talks about the people in your life and how people aren't always going to encourage you and some people will bring you down and that there is a nice kind way to distance yourself from people who bring negativity into your life. There were actually a couple of really great quotes that I liked from chapter two and the first one being, there will always be people who try to squeeze you into their mold and pressure you into being who they want you to be. They may be good people, they may mean well, but the problem is they didn't breathe life into you. And it's just a reminder that we have to listen to what God has called us to be, that your parents or your friends or your boss or your colleagues, they may have other dreams and plans for you, but ultimately you have to follow what God has put in your heart. He reminds you in the book to be kind about it when you let these people down and let them know that, hey, I'm going to do this no matter what because it's what God's called me to be. And that you don't have to feel guilty for letting those people down. That you're not called to make everyone else happy. That you worry about your own happiness. But then he also puts the responsibility of the people that we have in our lives that are controlling us. He puts that responsibility back on you, that it's not their fault that they're controlling you, that you need to stand up for yourself and you need to set boundaries. To me, chapter two talked a lot about being walked all over and just being taken advantage of, which I personally, again, don't relate with. I feel like I'm kind of a strong personality and I'm pretty good at saying no, but I'm sure that there are a lot of people who need to hear that. One of the things I found interesting though is a quote from this book that says, you shouldn't spend every day listening to friends complain. And I know that there are a lot of people who have people like this in their life. I have amazing friends and I personally don't struggle with this, but I know that there are complainers out there and I know some of you are probably friends with them and they get you on the phone and all they wanna do is talk about the bad and the negative. And he talks about how that negativity can impact you and you have to learn how to distance yourself from that. But then he also addresses the very important situation that some people are married to these negative people and how to handle that. And he talks about how we need to encourage ourselves and fill ourselves up, whether we're you know, listening to music that gets us excited or spending time in prayer, just really building ourselves up so that we can combat that negativity in our lives. And the last quote that really stood out to me from chapter two is, 
Be secure enough in who you are that you don't live to please people. And I think that a lot of times it is easier because people are constantly here in our faces, influencing us, pressuring us, and it is easier to just sometimes kind of give them what they want or they expect from us. But chapter two is all about pursuing what God wants from us and not worrying about everybody else, letting everybody else take care of themselves and us focus on our dreams and what we want to achieve in our lives. So we have three more episodes from this book. The next two chapters that we'll be reading are Expect Good Things and Have a Positive Mindset. And then I have an announcement. I have been saving for this episode. I have already purchased the next book for Book Club Wednesday. I am excited about this book. I've heard really good things. And that is Rachel Hollis's Girl, Wash Your Face. I ordered it off of Amazon. I actually got it for $8.99, but I think that might have just been like a special one day deal. But as of today, I think it's like $13, which is less expensive than what I priced at Target. So if you want to get the book to read along, I suggest ordering it soon off of Amazon because mine is taking almost a month to get here. We will probably be done with You Can, You Will before I get this book in. So there may even be a gap week in here. That's how long it's taking. So um, I have seen this at Target. I have not seen it at Walmart or my local grocery store. Again, you never have to have the book to follow along with these videos. I'm hoping that as this goes on, it'll become a little bit easier for me to figure out what we wanna talk about about the book. And if you are actually reading the book along with me, please, in the comments, talk about what you read, what you got out of the chapters, what you liked, your favorite quotes, whatever you wanna talk about about the book, I would love to read it in the comments. And so I think that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me in this series, and I will see you guys tomorrow.